Hey, 49ers fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome into Chat Sports, and today we have some fresh San Francisco 49ers news and rumors. There's a lot going on, especially this week with our 49ers as they get ready for the Saints on Sunday. Let's dive right into our very first bit of news here. And it's really news that all of you guys should understand by now, but with the results of Monday Night Football just a couple of days ago, Things have changed in the NFC playoff race, and it does revolve around our 49ers. So, we'll break it down. Because the Niners lost on Sunday to Baltimore, they're now 10-2. Seattle won on Monday Night Football over the Vikings. They are 10-2 as well. And so, in the span of one weekend, our 49ers went from the number one overall seed in the NFC, home field advantage throughout the playoffs, to suddenly the five seed in the NFC. And if you're wondering, wait, wait, why are we going from one to five? That makes no sense. It's because right now Seattle does hold the tiebreaker in the NFC West, which means same, you know, essential uh, record, 10 and two. Seattle would be the higher seed than the 49ers. Couple of things about the five seed versus the one seed. Here's the deal. The five seed does not host a home playoff game at all, meaning there will be no games at Levi Stadium in the postseason, which means the Niners would have to go on the road, not once, not twice, but three times just to get to the Super Bowl. So a potential matchup in the first round could be a wild card game at the NFC East division champ, whether that's the Eagles or the Cowboys. Then you'd either go on the road to either Seattle or New Orleans or Green Bay. Then you would then go on the road one more time to the NFC Championship game, which could be Seattle, which could be Green Bay, which could be New Orleans. So a lot of road games would have to really uh, be difficult to play in if the Niners, in fact, are the five seed. Now, we still have games left. Four games left for both the Seahawks and the 49ers, so anything can happen. Let's go ahead and throw up the uh, the schedule here and show you the Niners schedule versus the Seahawks schedule. We'll first do the Niners schedule. Saints on Sunday. We know, well, we know that. Falcons, Rams, then at the Seahawks. Seahawks schedule, though, is at the Rams, Panthers, Cardinals, 49ers. couple of quick takeaways here. Number one, Seattle has three of their final four games at home, whereas the 49ers are split two and two, and their two hardest games come on the road against the Seahawks and the Saints. So, right off the bat, I would argue that the Seahawks schedule is just a little bit easier, although they are very, very similar schedules in terms of strength of opponent. You see, both teams have the Rams. Both teams play each other. Both teams have a, uh, <coughs> excuse me, both teams have an interesting game like Carolina and the Saints, and then both teams have an easier game like the Falcons and the Cardinals. I would, <coughs> excuse me, I would argue the easier schedule here is the Seahawks, but at the same time, we do get some easy wins against the Falcons and the Rams, so there's a very real possibility that we both go into the final week of the season, Seahawks versus 49ers. Winner not only takes the division, but winner could also be taking the number one seed. Final thought here, and I wanna just break this down for you guys all the way through. This Sunday against the Saints, to me, is critical in terms of winning the division. I think you're gonna to have to win your first three games before the matchup against the Seahawks to be able to win the division. It's not gonna be a scenario where Seattle's gonna drop one of these four or one of these three before they face us. I think they're gonna win out. We, we, we have to then win out. So I cannot afford, we cannot afford, to lose to the Saints on Sunday. And again, technically, if you lost, then Seattle could lose. And there's other ways to win the, uh, the number one overall seed if you were to lose on Sunday. But the important factor here is this is a critical game against the Saints, not just for the division, but also for seeding because it is an NFC opponent. It's fascinating how this is all going to play out because, again, the difference between the one seed and the five seed could literally be one game, and that makes a massive difference. The last NFC team to go all the way to the Super Bowl was the Green Bay Packers from a wild card spot. They were the sixth seed, I think, in 2012. They beat Philadelphia, they beat the Giants, and they beat one more team on the road. I can't remember right now. And then on the on the route to the Super Bowl in Jerry World in Cowboy Stadium against the Pittsburgh Steelers. So it can it can be done but it's very difficult to do. We want that number one seed. Question for you guys here. Will the 49ers win the, the division? Like this video, thumbs up this video. If you guys still think the Niners are gonna win the NFC West, I think they're gonna do it. We'll have to wait and see what happens, but give me a thumbs up if you think we're going to win the division. All right, a lot of you guys are here for the injury news, so we'll get the injury news out of the way right now. Good news overall for the San Francisco 49ers. Matt Breida, D4. Joe Staley should all be good to go for Sunday in New Orleans against the Saints in the Superdome. Richard Sherman, as well, is going to be a game-time decision, but he is trending towards actually playing in the game on Sunday, which means the majority of our injured players look like they're going to be good to go. Here's what Kyle Shanahan said just the other day about the injuries, saying, quote, I'm holding out hope for all of them. 
I'm definitely more optimistic about Brita Ford and Staley. None of them are for sure, though. He's talking about Tart and Sherman as well, kind of mixed into that uh, group. Remember, Richard Sherman went down in uh, the latter parts of the uh, the Ravens game. Looked like a knee injury, turned out to be just cramps. He told the media he should be good to go. But this is huge for San Francisco. We thought there was a chance Brita and Ford could play against Baltimore. Turns out they were unable to go. But it looks like Brita, Ford, and the left tackle Joe Staley, which is very important, by the way, should be able to play on Sunday against the New Orleans Saints. The most important player, I would argue, out of all of these guys, besides... No, D Ford. You could argue Ford and Staley. I think Matt Breida is critical for this offense. I know that uh, Raheem Mostert played very, very well against the Ravens, but it seems like Tim and Coleman feeds off of Matt Breida and vice versa. I think Breida playing on Sunday has a big impact on whether or not the, uh, the 49ers are able to go ahead and beat the New Orleans Saints. All right, guys, we're trending to 10,000 subscribers here on the chatsports.com 49ers only YouTube channel. I would encourage you guys to subscribe, notification bell. If you guys like these videos, I know you guys do. Hit the red subscribe button. We produce stuff all the time. We go live on Thursdays. We do stuff on Monday and Tuesday, sometimes Sunday. Go ahead and give us a subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. You know what I also appreciate? You guys putting your money where your mouth is and betting on our San Francisco 49ers. Remember, they have not lost back-to-back -back games this entire season, meaning use our partner BetDSI, chatsports.com forward slash bet. Pretty good odds in terms of winning some money this week when betting on the Niners. We'll even help you out. Promo code 49ers gets you 120% deposit bonus whenever you guys first sign up. 100 bucks comes 220 bucks and vice versa. Highly encourage you guys to bet on the Niners this week. I'm feeling pretty good about our chances against the Saints. Again, chatsports.com forward slash bet. Use the promo code 49ers. Okay. Going back to the Ravens game a little bit here, could that have been a Super Bowl preview? Well, a lot of the 49er players were speaking to the media earlier this week talking about how that is a very likely matchup for the next Super Bowl in Miami this year. A lot of them felt like it was a playoff atmosphere, and a lot of them really want another crack at Lamar Jackson and the Niner offense, or the Raven offense, because they thought they did a pretty good job in containing Lamar Jackson, which they really did. Here's what DeForest Buckner had to say about the Ravens, saying, quote, every week is big. But being out there on the field, it was a dogfight. It was definitely felt like we were in a playoff game. And God willing, we'll make it to the end, and hopefully we go against them again. So it feels like if the Niners had their choice of who they would want to play on Super Bowl Sunday, they would actually choose to go ahead against the Ravens. Not this... The Steelers or the Patriots or the Chiefs or the Texans, they want another shot at Lamar Jackson, and I can't really blame them. It makes a lot of sense to me overall. I think they have a really, really good chance at getting Lamar Jackson a second time. I've said many times, not just on here, but uh, in other places as well, that if you get a second crack at a player like Lamar Jackson, I think you have a really good shot the second time to go ahead and beat them. I don't think the Ravens are even going to get out of the AFC because New England gets another crack at them most likely as the one or two seed potentially in Foxborough. And I think that defense and Bill Belichick are able to figure them out and hold on. But nonetheless, I like the fact and I like the idea of the Niners being motivated again to, hey, let's get back to the Super Bowl. Let's go to the Super Bowl and get back a chance to play against the, uh, the the Ravens again. We want to see Lamar Jackson. We know he played well, ran the football all over us. We can stop him this next time, and I would agree with them. Who's the best team in the NFC? So it's up for a lot of debate. Here's what I'm going to do. There's an ad about to appear on our videos. Just let that run, but scroll down right now. There'll be a pinned comment with the question, who's the best team in the NFC? I want you guys to debate it. Is it the Niners? Is it the Saints? Is it the Packers? Is it the Seattle Seahawks? Debate down below while the ad's running. By the time you're done, scroll up. We'll keep the videos and we'll keep the rumors going here. But again, a little pause here, but I want you guys to comment down below who's the best team in the NFC. All right, final bit of a news here today. This is fascinating to me, the whole George Kittle injury, which uh, is starting to become more and more clear on exactly what is going on. For those of you guys who don't know, George Kittle is dealing with a cracked bone in his ankle, also a knee injury, and he was great his first game back. Remember, a couple games ago, got a touchdown pass, had over 100 yards receiving, but this recent game against Baltimore, whether it was scheming or whether he was feeling the pain, he was less productive on Sunday, and we're getting more details about exactly how much pain he is going to be playing playing through. He spoke to the media all about how it hurts a lot. He's playing through a ton of pain, but it's also football, and football is a high contact sport, a high pain tolerance sport as well. But it's interesting where Kittle is channeling all of his toughness from. It deals goes back to his father. Take a listen to this. 
Quote, Kittle on the injury. Part of what came from Dad is toughness. Dad did play in the NFL. He tore his ACL during his last season, and in those days, he didn't do surgery on that. They casted him for like six weeks. Iowa made the Rose Bowl that year, and he came back for the game and played in the Rose Bowl. I mean, if he can do that, I can come back and play with this. First off, love the quote. I mean, remember, they weren't working on uh, ACL injuries like they do in today's uh, NFL, and he came back and played Mr. Kittle, the older Kittle, the, uh, the daddy Kittle, I should say. The fact that he played in the Rose Bowl with, essentially, probably still a torn ACL is unbelievable, but the fact that George Kittle is channeling that in the way he prepares for each game now with this ankle injury. Again, people call it like they compare it to a piece of bark being chipped off of a tree, aka bone being chipped off of his ankle. It's a rough injury. A lot of guys would not be playing through this, and we know that George Kittle is dealing with a lot of pain. So first off, props to him, but also keep an eye on this going forward. I know he blocked great, was a huge part of the run game against the Ravens, but I am worried about that breakaway, runaway, route running speed that we know George Kittle has, and actually a great route runner as well as a tight end. I want to see him perform and produce week in and week out. If he does not, I think that means the ankle is probably bothering him more than people actually realize. But we'll see. We love George Kittle. Type K down below in the chat if George Kittle is the best tight end in the NFL. We did this last week, but I think we need to show George Kittle some love because he is playing well with a major injury that you and I would probably not even be able to walk on. So K down below. Hit it as many times as possible, many comments as possible, if you guys are in love with George Kittle and say he's the best tight end in the league. All right. Final bit, of, final bit of little uh, business to take care of here. If you guys waited this long in the video, I'm going to reward you with a crazy good link to some awesome 49ers gear on Fanatic, fanatics.com. Listen, you might have missed a deal on Black Friday, missed a deal on Cyber Monday. There's still some great deals going on. How about this link? Chatsports.com forward slash 49 sale will take you to the sale page. There's a ton of great Christmas gear. Wrap up your Christmas shopping. Great 49er stuff there. Chatsports.com slash 49 sale. The link will be in the comments and in the description as well. I grabbed some stuff. You guys might want to grab some stuff as well because it's selling like hotcakes. It's going really, really fast. Chatsports.com slash 49 sale. All right, there you go. All the time we have for today on our 49ers news and rumors video. Really appreciate you guys as always. We'll see what happens on Sunday. Live video this Thursday at 630 Sure to tune in for that, as we always do. For Chat Sports, I'm Thomas Mott, signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day.